So let's look at pulse shaping and ask ourselves what is it and what is the square root raised cosine. And here's a digital communication system where we put in an input of digital bits and in this uh, case we are putting in delta functions where they're either positive for a uh, a positive for a one and negative for a zero uh, and they're spaced at uh, t apart so this is the symbol period uh, of our digital communication system uh, and we have a transmit filter and a channel and a receive filter and then a decision is made at the receiver uh, noise is in the receiver uh, and this is uh, Gaussian noise and uh, if you uh, want more information on that there's another video on Gaussian noise in the notes below this video. Uh, so the channel is given to us by nature and physics and the engineering job is to design the transmit filter and the receive filter. And here's an equation uh, which describes what's going on. Uh, and of course it's all a linear system so the input signal is convolved with the transmit filter, convolved with the channel, convolved with the receive filter and the noise that's in the receive uh, amplifier uh, uh, in the receiver uh, goes through the receive filter and this is this component here. Uh, why do we need these filters? What are these filters? Well you can't just send a 1 and a 0, you have to send a waveform and so for example one waveform that uh, we might say is the most basic one is a waveform where for a digital one you send a positive pulse which is a square pulse uh, of length time, uh, length t uh, and you just hold it constant uh, so this would be an impulse response from that transmit filter if you designed your transmit filter in this way uh, and then of course if it's puts if there's a negative impulse coming in representing a digital zero then the output from this filter would be the negative of this pulse and then that goes into the channel and so on. So the question for pulse shaping is, is this a good shape for the pulse? Uh, one thing we just observe here uh, is that this, all of these three concatenation of the transmit filter, the channel and the receive filter, uh, we're going to think of as one effective channel and that's uh, going to help us uh, as we uh, go forward here and one thing to think about this is these are convolved in time so there's a frequency response of our effective channel and convolution in time is multiplication in frequency so this would be h the receive filter in frequency times the channel response in frequency times the transmit filter in frequency. These are multiplied together in the frequency domain because they're convolved in the time domain because that's what happens when you put signals into filters. Okay so let's think about this pulse shape. We're wondering about pulse shaping. Let's think of this most basic one and ask ourselves if it's a, a good one to choose uh, and so we might send this as we said. Uh, let's think about that. So if that's the impulse response of this transmit filter, there is a result, we won't go into all the details, but there is a result which says if the channel is flat in the frequency domain, uh, then you can see that the effective channel is just the receive filter times the transmit filter in the frequency domain. And there's a result that says these two filters should be matched to each other. The amplitude should be in the frequency domain should be the same uh, and they should be the uh, complex conjugate uh, with the phase. So that means that they are um, time reverse complex conjugates of each other in the time domain. So that's a result uh, that uh, starts to give us an idea about the square root here because they, we're designing the transmit filter and the receive filter and if they've got to be the same then they're going to be the square root of this effective filter. Now if when we go through this, so that means this would also be a square in the case where this is a square, this one would be a square and the convolution of the two squares, let's assume for the moment that the channel is flat in the frequency domain, so we're just convolving these two uh, filters here because this is, uh, this is flat in the frequency domain means it's an impulse in the time, so the effect of convolving these two, uh, if, the, if this would be a square in this case, uh, would give us the output voltage yt. Uh, if we just ignore the noise component for the moment uh, then the convolution of two squares is a triangle. 
uh, and uh, you can confirm this for yourselves or you may, may already know this but you can confirm this for yourselves from just doing that convolution uh, using knowledge of signals and systems. So this is uh, what's coming out of YT and then you sample it at the capital T and you can see here that this would give you the sample here and if another bit was sent another symbol was sent with a, either a plus one or a minus one in the next time slot, then this would result in a triangle here. And sampling at 2t, there would be no effect from the first symbol left over because uh, that's gone to zero and you would only be getting the effect of the second symbol whether it was a positive or negative. And that would be telling you at the receiver you could make the decision is it positive or negative. So this is the, uh, this is the xt for this HT impulse response. So this impulse response of this filter here results in an overall uh, channel impulse response of this triangle when the receiver filter is chosen in the way that matches with the transmitter uh, and, and this results in the triangle. What does this have in the frequency domain so that we can decide whether it's a good choice of our pulse shaping? So in the frequency domain the Fourier transform of this triangle is the square of the Fourier transform of this square because this is when we've convolved the square with the square in the time domain means you multiply the Fourier transforms in the frequency domain. The Fourier transform of a square is a sinc function so the Fourier transform of a triangle is a squared sinc function. Okay so this is the Fourier transform uh, of the pulse which is a square pulse. Now uh, we can answer the question is this a good choice and it's not really a good choice because clearly in the frequency domain it is infinite frequency. This goes on forever uh, and these side lobes die down but they keep going forever. So we don't have infinite bandwidth because in all radio systems we would like to put other channels in other signals in neighboring channels and when there's a sync function in the frequency domain that would be causing a lot of interference. So that's not a, good, not a good choice. What would be another choice? Well, this has got sharp corners, which is, leads to the high frequency. So let's think of something that's a bit smoother. Let's pick a Gaussian shape. So if we had a Gaussian shape, and this is the pulse shaping, so we choose this impulse response of this filter, transmit filter, to have a Gaussian shape that's smoothed out. Uh, this would give us then, because again, we'd be picking the receive filter match to the transmit, and the convolution of those two Gaussians gives us a shape like I've drawn here. Again, we'd be sampling at t, and, and it's going down to zero at 2t, so it has good properties uh, from that point of view. What is it in the frequency domain? It looks a bit like, it looks well, it's a Gaussian, and I'm trying to draw it fairly accurately. It goes past the first uh, side lobe and then dips down. And what we can see is there's less effect, there's less components of high frequency because it's come down this Gaussian in the frequency domain for the Gaussian pulse shape in the time domain. So that's a good property, it's come down less of the high frequencies uh, and that's a good thing because it means if we were in practice to chop off after a certain frequency range and put another signal in a, in a neighboring channel uh, then we would be affecting this signal much less than the original square signal. So that's a good property. Uh, so it might be good to do this function here, but can we do something even better? So let's think about what might be uh, an, more of an ideal thing from the frequency domain point of view. So let's think of a waveform here um, that is an actually, let's consider this one and see if this is going to be an interesting one to look at. And the one is I'm suggesting here is a sync function in the time domain. So let's uh, think of a sync function in the time domain, again, for this overall uh, channel, overall effective channel. Uh, let's think if it was a sync function. So the impulse response, these two filters together, uh, providing a, an impulse response, which is a sync function. Would that be any good? Well, we know that the Fourier transform of a sync function is a square. And uh, this case here, if it's chosen in this way here, then this, this square is from 1 on 2t. So it's actually very much compacted compared to this one. It's very much in a smaller frequency range uh, and so it has very 
attractive properties. It's zero outside that, so you can put other channels in, other signals in neighboring channels, and there would be no interference in the frequency domain. So it's very attractive from that point of view. So this looks like a good pulse shape for us to choose. Um, but nothing comes for free, so what have we paid for? So we've got this zero here outside, and the entire signal is contained in this narrow frequency band, which is great. Uh, what have we done to pay for that? Well, the signal now goes for an infinite amount of time. These other signals were contained between zero and T. This now goes for an infinite amount of time. So that's uh, something we need to deal with. Uh, of course, in practice, we would chop it off and not have it go for an infinite amount of time. Um, but because these are quite significant, these oscillations, that would be quite an effect and we wouldn't be contained in this frequency band anymore. Another issue, as well as infinite time, is that this crosses fairly um, steep. And if you've got the timing slightly wrong, then it won't be crossing at zero. And that means you'll get interference from one symbol to the next. That's inter-symbol interference. So uh, is there a compromise? And so it turns out this is where the raised cosine comes in. Uh, so there's another wave, another class of waveforms, which they look in the frequency vein a little bit like the Gaussian one, but they're shaped as a raised cosine. And they are between, my, uh, well, there's a class of them, but let me draw the extreme one here, which is between minus one on T and one on T. So uh, compared to the one above, I haven't quite drawn this to scale, but you can see that it's quite favorable, again, with the one above. It's, it's contained within a reasonable frequency band, not as good as the sync function, the time domain sync function, but still reasonably contained in frequency. Uh, and in the time domain, what does it look like? Well, it comes down more quickly, and then it goes through these crossing points at the same places, the same crossing points, but more smoothly and with less of these oscillations. So this one was the sync, and this one is the raised cosine. And the raised cosine has, has still has infinite, but because they're reduced oscillations, it's not so much of a problem if you chop it off in time to make a practical finite time function. Uh, and because it goes through at a less acute angle, if you make some errors with your timing, it's not such a bad thing and you don't get so much interference between the symbols from one symbol to the next. Uh, so the raised cosine is a good compromise. So where does the square root raised cosine come in? We've, we've talked about pulse shaping, we've talked about the raised cosine. What about the square root raised cosine? Well, just remind ourselves, here we're talking about the overall channel, effective channel, uh, and so we need to think about what is the actual impulse response of the transmit filter. And it's gonna be the square root in the frequency domain, so it is a waveform which convolved with itself gives this waveform here because it's multiplied. Uh, these two are in, in frequency, these two are convolved in time. And this uh, turns out that this function, if you, uh, if you take the, get the raised cosine here and take the inverse uh, Fourier transform or the square root of this, the, so the square root of this function is a function that still has the same frequency, but a slightly different shape uh, here because when you take the square of it, you're gonna get the raised cosine, so you've got the square root raised cosine still in the same frequency band, uh, and in the time domain, it just uh, it's a little more compacted uh, in the time domain, uh, and it actually doesn't cross exactly where the crossing points are. Um, it crosses inside these crossing points here. If you plot it out, uh, I won't give the full equation, but it's it's a more con contained in time, of course, because when you convolve it with yourself, it with itself, it's going to spread out and give this raised cosine uh, for the overall effective channel, which is the convolution of the transmit and receive filter. So this is a good way to design the transmit and the receive filter with a compromise of bandwidth and finite bandwidth uh, and finite time. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and to like this video. It helps others to find uh, this video uh, and see the web page listed in the information below uh, where there's a complete categorized list of all of the videos on the channel and also PDFs of this worksheet, uh, which uh, might be helpful.